Greetings YouTubers. Today I'm going to show you how to calculate the regression equation for psychology statistics. The regression equation psychology statistics is an equation researchers use in order to make predictions about data based on the tendencies of other data that it was derived from. So let's go into a little more explanation about what this means. Take for example this formula y prime plus 72x plus 16 Pretend this formula is estimated cost of your college textbooks, where x is the number of books you buy. All you would do is replace the x with however many books you would need, and it would give you an approximation of how much money it would cost. So, take for example, we got y prime here, and we say that we needed three books for college. So all we would do is just replace the x with three. So being that, 72 times three plus 16 equals $232. So this would be our estimated cost on how much we would predict that we need for college textbooks. So how do we actually calculate something like this? Well the first step is to look at our data. So say you're a professor and you want to see if there's a connection based on your average homework score in regards to the final grade in the class. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take the data of five, you know, five random students in this case. It could be more, it could be less. But in this case, we're going to stick to five to make it simple. Um, take down the data of five random students in your class. We have the homework average and we have the final grade. So as you can see, we have the things that we're comparing here. And what we're going to do from here is we're actually going to fill in this information in one of these charts. Now, it may look complicated at first, but it's relatively simple. I'm going to step you through it each way. The first thing we've got to calculate is the mean of x. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add up all these numbers under x. So 76 plus 84 plus 54 plus 91 plus 80 divided by 5. This is going to give us 77, and we're going to write that next to each of these numbers. The next step is going to be a, to calculate x minus the mean of x. So we're going to take 76 minus 77 equals ne negative 1. We're going to go 84 minus 77 equals 7. We're going to go 54 minus 77 equals negative 23. We're going to go 91 minus 77 equals 14. And 80 minus 77 equals 3. And from there, we're going to square each of these numbers. This is going to be our x minus mean of x squared. So negative 1 squared is 1, 7 squared is 49, negative 23 squared is 529, 14 squared is 196, and 3 squared is 9. We're going to do pretty much the same thing over here to y. So we're going to go with the mean of y, 82 plus 92 plus 65 plus 97 plus 86 divided by 5 is 84.4. We're going to put that next to all five of them. And then we're going to take our y minus the mean of y, 82 minus 84.4 is negative 2.4, 92 minus 84.4 is 7.6, so on for each of these. The only thing different is we're at the end of here, we're going to take the product of x minus mean of x and y minus mean of y. And we're going to multiply these two rows of numbers. So negative 1 times negative 2.4 is 2.4. 7 times 7.6 is 53.2. Negative 23 times negative 19.4 is 446.2. 14 times 12.6 is 176.4 and 3 times 1.6 is 4.8. So now that we have all this information, we need to calculate a couple formulas. The first formula we need to calculate is called the sum of squares, which is abbreviated as SX, lowercase x. <coughs> and the formula for this is going to be the sum of x minus mean of x squared. So we're going to add up each of these numbers here, 1 plus 49 plus 529 plus 196 plus 9 is 784. That's our sum square. The next thing we need to calculate is our covariation. This is abbreviated by SPXY. The formula for this is going to be the sum of x minus mean of x times y minus mean of y. So we're going to take these numbers over here, and we're going to add them all up. So 2.4 plus 53.2 plus 
plus 446.2 plus 176.4 plus 4.8 683 next thing we need to calculate is our slope <coughs> our slope is going to be abbreviated by b y x equals our covariation divided by our sum of squares so we're going to take the answers that we got before and we're going to throw them in the formula so 683 divided by 784 is 0.87. Next thing that we're going to calculate is our y-intercept. This is going to be abbreviated by an a. So we're going to take our mean of y for this formula, subtract our slope times our mean of x. So this is going to be 84.4, our mean of y, minus 0.87, our slope, times our mean of x, which is 77. This is going to give us an answer of 17.4. So for our slope, this is going to be almost like a percentage you can think of this. When you're looking at a regression equation line, you're looking at a straight line that's supposed to measure the central tendency of all the data points. So this 0.87 is, can be think relative to 100% being straight up. So this is going to be the angle that this line is going to be shooting out at. So now that we have our slope and our y-intercept, we now have a regression equation. So let's try it out. So let's say I got a 79 on my homework average and I want to see how much I could predict based on the past other grades in my class, how much I would pro approximately get for my final grade. So let's say I got a 79 on my homework grade. We're going to plug this into the x, 0.87 times 79 plus 17.4 equals 86.13. You can do this with plenty of other data points. Um, this is a pretty accurate predictor. Um, it's not completely accurate, but it usually will end up being relatively close. Um, continuing that the same things stay the same. So for step five, we're going to calculate our standard error. So standard error is something that you're going to frequently see in science classes, um, specifically psychology statistics. It's something that the professor will most likely ask you to do. Um, our standard error of the estimate tells us how much variance is accounted for in our y, our final grade, by knowing our x, in our case, our homework average. So in other words, how much do the final grades get accounted by home the homework average? Well, the formula for our standard error, um, which is S y prime minus y, is what it's abbreviated by, is the sum of y minus y prime squared. Add those numbers up, divided by n minus 2. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to plug in each of these y values that you see here into our our regression equation. So as we can see, you have 82, 92, 65, 97, 86. We're going to plug each of these numbers into our equation, and we're going to get an answer. Then from there, we're going to subtract these numbers from each of the y values. So for y, we have 82, and the answer for in the equation was 88.74, so we're going to subtract the 88.74 from the eight, original 82. And we're going to get an answer. And we're going to do the same thing for the 92. 92 minus 97.44, 65 minus 73.95, and so on. <coughs> then from here, we have to square each of our y minus y prime values. So 6.74 squared is 45.43, 5.44 squared is 29.59, 8.95 squared is 80.1, and 4.79 squared is 22.9, and 6.22 squared is 38.68. Now we need to take the sum of each of these. So we're going to add them all up, and we're going to get a final answer for the top of 216.71. Divide this by n divided by 2, 
So our n is 5 in this case, how many total number of participants we have. 5 minus 2 is 3. So 216.71 divided by 3 is 72.23. Then we got to take the square root of this number. So the square root of 72.23 is 8.49. And this is our standard error. So going back here to n, in case you guys didn't know, our n value is actually going to be the total number of participants in the sample size. And it is always used as a universal, um, I guess, way of measuring how many people are in a sample size. And you'll see this in a lot of um, science research if you're a science major. So now that we calculated this, we are all done. So if you feel confused, rewind back, read through each of the steps, and each step is pretty explained. I try breaking it down into the best incremental steps that I possibly can. Um, just remember that you can do it. Um, it is more simple than you think. The first time you go around this, you see a lot of different you know, I remember the first time I did it, I had to go through and I saw all these different steps and I thought it would be difficult, but it's 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 really not. It's it's relatively simple. Um, you know, just keep going through and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more learning opportunities in psych and psych statistics. Um, and please support by subscribing. So, good luck.